The 06-07 season was a funny time in West Ham's history, coming hot off the heels of our defeat in what many people call the greatest FA Cup final of all time. It was a season that, like so many others, promised so much but delivered so little. We socked the footballing world by signing two Argentinian wonder kids, Tevez and Maserano, but the wheels quickly fell off, starting with an immediate exit from the UEFA Cup in the first round to Italian team Palermo. Alan Pardew refused to play Maserano, instead opting for Hayden Mullins, what was that about? And it took Tevez until March to score his first goal for the club. But hope rose once again as an Icelandic consortium led by Egger Magnusson bought the club in November. But it was never going to be plain sailing as poor results led to the new owners replacing Pardew with Alan Kerbisley. But still relegation was a constant worry until the last day of the season when Tevez's goal versus champions Man United gave the club the win they needed to survive in the league for another season. So now, let's see if I can do it any better in episode 1 of Bubbles on the Rise. Hello guys, it's me, Bad Jokes, back at you once again with another video. And today guys, we have got the start of a brand new series here on the channel. I am so excited for this one. I've literally waited months for this because we have jumped in our DeLorean, jumped in our TARDIS, any time machine you can think of. We have jumped in it and gone all the way back to 2006 for this series where we're going to be managing West Ham in the 06-07 season and possibly beyond. I'm so excited for this. And if you want to give this database a go yourself, I'm going to put the Mad Scientist's Twitter in the description down below. Go and check it out for yourselves. From there, you can find his PayPal or his Patreon where you can donate. He's asking for $1.00 donation and is putting so much work it really really is worth that one dollar to be able to get your hands on this database for yourself and so let's go and have a look at the squad before the first game where we are going to be playing against Sheffield United you can see some of them here Robert Green back when he was decent before that fumble he had in the 2010 World Cup uh, Anton Ferdinand, how old's he here? 21 years old, Rio's little brother. Can we develop him to get as good as Rio? You never know. Uh, who else? Javier Maserano. I am not going to be making the same mistake Pardew made that I alluded to in the intro. He is going to be getting a whole lot of games. He's 22 years old here. And look at his attributes. 16 first touch, marking of 17, tackling of 17, decisions 15, those mentals are off the board, natural fitness of 17, man was just a freak, how he didn't get into our team back in the day, only Pardew knows, Yossi Benayoun, I loved Yossi Benayoun back in the day, his runs on the right hand side, oh, I loved him. You can see it there, dribbling of 15, agility of 16, crossing only 13, a little bit disappointing, but might still be good enough. Composer of 15, off the ball, 14. And who else is there? Nigel Mediocre. He is our captain and he's in the team. He did do a decent job for us as captain, but it was at a very weird time for the club. You can see here though, passing of 15, tackling of 17, work rate 20. That's a little bit high. What on earth were the FM researchers thinking back in the day? Bravery of 17, balance of 20, stamina of 19, wowzers. And so just have a look at a couple more. Let's have a look at the dream team up top. Dean Ashton and Carlos Tevez. First up, Dean Aston. I'm so looking forward to a whole season of these two up top. Aston, finishing of 16, 
penalty taking of 18, heading 15, acceleration 14. The man should have been the new Alan Shearer for England. You really, really do think if it wasn't for that unfortunate injury he had, he would have been a major player for England. And so now, let's have a look. Badum! Tevez, 22 years old, dribbling of 16, first touch 16, finishing 15. He's valued at 28.5 million. If we can keep hold of him, we could get some serious money for him. Or he could take us to the Champions League and maybe beyond. Technique of 16, off the ball 18, determination and flair are just mental. So you know what? Let's go and get into the first game. And let's have a look at the tactics that we've got set up for it. If you want me to have a look at any other players in any future episodes, please do leave the comments down below. And also comment down below if you're doing this database as well and who you're going to be managing. The Mad Scientist database are always my favourites. So, yep, yeah, here we go. We're gone for a weird 3-1-4-2 formation because back then our fullbacks weren't the best, to be honest. So we've gone for 3-1-4-2. Green in goal, James Collins at centre-back, Anton Ferdinand as a ball-playing defender, Gabby Don the other side of him, and an in-defensive midfield, Maserano in that quarterback-type role. He should do well there, I think. Koncheski is our left winger as a defensive winger. Rio Coca and Boya in the middle of the park. Yossi Benayoun on the right hand side. And then up top it is of course Carlos Tevez and Dean Aston. We're going for a positive mentality. We're hitting early crosses, playing higher tempo, distributing the ball to Maserano the playmaker. And we've got a lower defensive line. Come on, you irons. What a game to be starting this series off with. How ironic do you get with everything that happened between West Ham and Sheffield United this season, with Tevez keeping us up and pushing Sheffield United down to the relegation. This was the only game that surely we could get on episode one. So you know what, let's get into it. For any Sheffield United fans watching, here is your team. Not really that many player names I recognise. Paddy Kenny, I recognise his name. Phil Jagielka, of course, because I'm guessing this is before he went to Everton. And David Unsworth on the left. Keith Gillespie, ex-Newcastle man, on the right hand side. And Michael Tong on the left. And so let's get into this game. Uh, yep, as usual, ask the assistant. Yep, passing it with favourites for a reason. Come on, I have faith. And you know what? I'm going to go. I want you to take control. And I want I want to see some quality finishing. And so, prediction time. 2 0 us. Come on, you irons. Right, and first highlight of the game is Sheffield United with the ball straight from the kickoff. And I do just want to mention, before we do get too far into the game, I've started this with no transfers. So for the first few months up until we get to January, the teams all are how they was back in the day. So that's what I've done. I know other people are starting it with transfers right from the start, but I wanted a little bit of realism. So we're going for that so that teams are how they would be until January at least. And early days, Ben Ayoun has gone down with an injury. I'm not quite sure what we're going to do here. I think we're going to have to chuck Matthew Everington on. Let's get him on in place of Yossi Ben Ayoun. He doesn't like that role, does he? He does not like that role. And OK, we're going to leave it like that. Everington on the right-hand side. Let's see what he can do from there. Oh, half an hour into the game and Everton's got the ball. He's crossed it in. It's Tevez with the header. And that was poor. And Paddy Kenny with the easy save there. Five minutes later. Now we're finally getting a few highlights. Nigel Rio Coca with the cross. It gets blocked. Goes to Javier Maserano. To Paul Koncheski who gets past his man there. And can he get the ball into the box? He might take this shot on himself. You don't know. He's done something. 
answers on a postcard. I have no idea what that was. One more highlight before half time, and the ball's come in from Everton, but it's been cleared away. And now Everton's got the ball again on the edge of the box. Goes for a long shot. And Matthew Everton off the bar, off the bench even has scored a cracking goal from the edge of the penalty area. We're going to have a look at this again. It was him who started the move. Tried to get the ball to Collins. But it went away. Everton ran to the edge of the box. Found himself a little bit under pressure. Took the long shot on. And we are 1-0 up before half time. And that is the half time whistle. We are 1 0 up. We've played okay. Five shots to Sheffield United's three. Three on target to their one. And a little bit more of the ball. Let's go into the dressing room. Let's go team talk. And let's go passionate. Um, I know you're capable of even better. No real reaction there. Uh, I have faith. And uh, come on. Uh, oh, I've upset Paul Koncheski. Didn't want to do that. Paul Koncheski, the bald-headed madman. He might just headbutt me now. And there we go. Come on. Can we get Tevez a little bit more into the game? He's not done a whole lot yet. Would be so ironic if we can get Tevez to score here today. Okay, so 25 minutes left to go. Matty Everington, who after coming off the bench, is now going to be back on it. Because he's picked up a little bit of a knock. So we're having to replace him with Bobby Zamora in a role he really, really doesn't like. But I think he's the best option for what we've got. So let's see if we can hold on for the next 25 minutes. Three minutes left of this game. And Sheffield United have given away a free kick on the edge of the box. Michael Tong giving it away. And I think it's going to be Koncheski to take it. No, it's not. It's Maserano to take it. He crosses the ball into the box. Aston with the header. And Dean Aston makes it 2-0 to the Cockney boys. 2-0 to the Cockney boys. Yes. That is a nice, comfortable early win for us. All wrapped up, you would think. Dean Aston with the decent header there. Giving their man, Paddy Kenny, no chance. Lee Bromby's come on. Lee Bromby is a man I remember. I used to buy him all the time. Back on the old championship managers and the old football managers. But now a minute left. Sheffield United coming forward with the ball. Ledger Wood with the ball. He gets to the edge of the box on the right hand side. He's going to cross it in. He does eventually, but Gabidon heads away, goes to Michael Tong, and his volley goes harmlessly over the net. And now that is the full-time whistle. 2-0 win, Matthew Everington, Dean Aston with the goals. 13 shots to their 5, 7 on target to their 1, 50-50 on the possession. So that is a beautiful way to start this season and to start this series. Let's go team talk. Let's go passionate. I'm very happy with the result and the way that you played. That's where we're going to leave it for today. After that nice comfortable win in our opening game. If you've enjoyed that video, pop a massive thumbs up down below. Likes really do help a channel out on their new series on episode 1s. So please do smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel for more Football Manager 20 content just like this one. We've got this. We've got the Kings Lynn series as well. So a whole lot of good stuff going on over here. Follow me on Twitter at Bad Jokes Gaming. And as well as that, check out the Passion for FM Discord, Twitter, website and the Facebook. And check out all the other Passion for FM YouTubers. Think I've got all their details down below. So check all them guys out. I'll be back tomorrow with the Kings Lynn series. Uh, 3 o'clock Saturday. That sound good for football? I think it does. So I'll be back with the next episode in the Kingsland series then. I shall see you tomorrow. Bye.